What's good, gang? So I know my facial hair got me looking a little too young to be an educator, but I'm here again to help y'all understand Southern language. But y'all know what I got to do first before I get started. Put on the bifoculars. Hi, how are you? One of the first things you need to understand about the South is there is not one accent, okay? Accents vary depending on state, sometimes the city, and sometimes the location in that city. But the beautiful thing about the South is, regardless of what part of the South you're from, we all understand each other. Now, that being said, every state has at least one group of people that talk like Boomhauer from King of the Hill. And rest assured, we don't understand them either. If you find yourself in a conversation with one of these people, there is a method that you can utilize in conversation. And it goes a little something like this. Mm-hmm. Yup. Mm-hmm. Is that right? If they start laughing. <laughs> hey, boy, you crazy. Don't you know that? You should also make note that these people usually have at least one phrase that they'll utilize over and over throughout the conversation to kind of make sure you're following along. And it's usually something like, you understand what I'm telling you? You hear me? When you hear these phrases, it is very important that you say, mm -hmm. after about 30 or so, mm -hmm, yips, you should be able to escape from the conversation. Now, another thing that is different in the South is how we give directions. And there's really only one word that you need to memorize when it comes to Southern directions. And that word is yonder. Yonder is not a word that gives specification. It just gives you a general location of where you should expect to find whatever it is that you're looking for. For example, you're playing football with your kid. The ball gets thrown. You can't find it. So you go over to your neighbor's house and you ask, hey, have you seen a football anywhere? Someone in the South might say, you know, now that you're mentioning, I was outside with my wife earlier. I think if you go on down yonder by that there tractor, you might find what you're looking for. Another way a Southerner might give you instructions is to just point out a series of other locations that aren't the one that you're asking for to define where that location is. For example, you knock on your neighbor's door and tell them that you're looking for a, a mechanic shop to fix your car because you just tore up your bumper. They might say something like, I tell you what, you know, if you go on down yonder by that Jerry's fish house, you know, the one that has a blue fire hydrant beside it and the torn up fence in between, yeah, you might find one over there. Even a simple question can be made difficult when talking to a Southerner involving directions. Like if you're at a social event and you see a person and y'all are chatting it up and you ask, hey, where are you from? They might say something like, I'm from around the way. So then you ask the reasonable question. Well, where is that from? Down yonder. Now, one of the most vital things you need to learn before going to the South is that the way we measure things is completely different than anywhere else. For example, you and your parents decide that you're going to go out on a dinner date. And so you tell them, hey, we're going to meet there at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, you show up. You don't see your parents. So you ask, hey, guys, um, where are you? You know what they say? We down the street. Now, this is where it gets interesting because down the street could mean a plethora of things. But the one thing that it usually does mean is that they're not down the street. Down the street could be five miles, 10 miles. Hell, sometimes they ain't even left the house yet. At that point, if they say they're down the street, you might as well go ahead and get an appetizer because it's going to be a minute. Another example of this would be the phrase in a minute. If someone tells you they're going to be there in a minute, it's not going to be a minute. It's going to be a minute. Which brings me to another form of measurement used in the South, and it's called doubles. This is when we say the same thing two times for emphasis. For example, you ask your friend, what's the temperature like outside? And they say, it's cold. And then you ask, how cold? A normal American would tell you, the temperature is 14 degrees. But a Southerner, they're gonna say, it's cold, cold. Now, what does that mean? It means you should put on a jacket. You see, there's cold, and then there's cold, cold. Now, if it's just cold, you good. But if they say it's cold, cold, it's colder than a mug. And this measurement can be used for just about anything, okay? You get in a fight, you get hit upside the head, a knot grows out, you ask your friend, how bad is it? And they say, man, it's big. And you say, how big? Big, big. Nine times out of 10, you probably look like the kid from the Fairly Odd Parents that had the talk and boil. In the South, even words that you already understand have a different meaning. Like the word yesterday. In regular America, if someone said yesterday, that means if today's Tuesday, yesterday will be Monday. In the South, Yesterday could have been two years ago. You see, in the South, yesterday is not an increment of time. It's more so a clarification of an event. While I may not have seen him yesterday, what you can know for sure is that I did see him. In fact, 
I seen them down yonder. Now, if there's one thing I feel like Southern Americans do better than anyone else in the world, it's descriptions, okay? Southerners describe things in a way that nobody else can. They really like to go for it when they describe things, okay? We use metaphors, similes, and unnecessary amount of adjectives, and we're going to describe it in a way that only a Southerner could. For example, you're outside on a hot day, you walk into a building, and you want to let everybody know that it is really hot outside. Now, a normal American might say something like, hey, man, the sun's really beaming down today. But not a Southerner, no. A Southerner might say something like, boy, it's hotter than two rats fucking in a wool sock outside. Because of this natural gift that we have, you have to be careful when speaking to Southerners and asking questions like, do I look big in these jeans? Because they might say something like, bless your heart. Your ankles look like they're suffocating. Translation, you like a pop can of Pillsbury biscuits. Escape them clothes as fast as possible. Now, this next tip is one that I think applies more so to the minority community, but definitely the black community, okay? And it's, it's more so for the people that aren't aware, you know, if you grew up in a suburban household, you may have never heard these words before, but they're just to let you know that you don't have to be alone when you hear these things because they're just exaggerations. Now, the reasoning behind this is because they don't actually put any thought into what they're saying. They just say whatever it is that you're doing, and then they throw that ass on the end of it. For example, you go outside to play tetherball with your friends. Your mom approaches and says, I thought I told you to clean your room before you went outside. Why didn't you? And you say, well, we're just playing tetherball. She'll probably say something like, I'm gonna play tetherball with that ass if you don't go clean that room up. You tap dancing? I'm gonna tap dancing that ass if you don't clean that room up. You're having a bad day and you're depressed? Go depress them dishes before I have a bad day on that ass. Some of these threats are just downright impossible. Your parent might say, roll your eyes again and I'm gonna knock your head between the washer and dryer. You come home with another F, I'm going to knock you in the next week. Now, obviously, these things aren't possible. But at the same time, you ain't trying to find out. Another thing you need to understand about the South is that you can't take everything you hear for surface value, okay? We have some very strange sayings. For instance, if you made a meal and it was prepared really well, someone might tell you, boy, you put your foot in that. This is simply a compliment, okay? You do not, in fact, need to put your foot in it. Another thing you might hear after giving someone a really good meal is, boy, I'm full as a tick. If you don't know what a tick is, it's a blood-sucking insect that consumes the blood of its host, and then it swells up into this really nasty-looking marble thing, and if you step on it, it just pops and all the blood comes out. It's pretty disgusting, and I'm pretty sure they can give you Lyme disease. But, I mean, the food was good, though. And, of course, if we have our own phrases, it's only right that we have our own words as well. Now, these words are typically actual words that we either pronounce different or it's a combination of words that we've mashed together. For example, the phrase supposed to be. In the South, that would be supposed to be. Another one, sure is. In the South, shoal is. I am 25 years old. I still don't know what a shoal is. But am I going to keep saying it? Show live. I'm going to. I'm a. Other common alternatives are finna, gonna, fixin', and lastly, one of the most important things you need to know about Southerners is that they do not leave like regular people, okay? There's two ways that Southerners leave. This first person, they aren't going to announce their departure. They're going to do something different. They're going to ask you a question. I'll give an example. You're at a little football party. You're watching the game. The game's coming to an end, and one of your friends says, hey, man, you know, this has been a good game. Uh, you know, a lot of action. So, um, what y'all finna get into? Translation, they finna leave. Or they'll do this. Same scenario. Football party. Game's coming to an end. And they'll just point out something that nobody asked. Like, yeah, that was a good game, man. I don't had a really good time. The food was busting. Uh, man, shoot, well, you know, I sure got some laundry in my, in my laundry room I should probably take care of. Translation, they wanted to leave a long time ago. But the second person... It's absolutely the worst person to have at a party. Same scenario. Football party is coming to an end, and here they go. Hey, man, you know, that was a good game. Boy, I tell you, I tell you. Yeah, well, uh, I guess I'm going to get on down the road then, man. And I'm going to catch y'all. All right, now y'all be easy. Now, at this point, they are sitting on the couch. They start to approach the door. They get to the door. Yeah, man, that game was good. Boy, I tell you, don't panic. They were going crazy. Now, I'm going to tell you, hey, I'm going to catch y'all next time. No. Now, they start to go down the stairs. They get to the bottom of the stairs. Yeah, man, I tell you what, boy, that was crazy, man. Hey, by the way, uh, what that was you had put in the wings, man? That sauce was nice, man. Can I get that recipe up off you? Now they're coming back up the steps because they want to get the recipe. 
So now they got the recipe. They at the door again. Yeah, boy, I tell you, I tell you, man, them Raiders, boy, they some trash, they some trash. But uh, I'm about to catch y'all next time, though. They get back to the bottom of the stairs. Boy, y'all really been cutting this grass out here, boy. It look nice, man. What kind of lawnmower you got? Now you explain to them where you got your lawnmower from and what brand it is. They still standing by the staircase. But that conversation ends. Now they standing by their car with the door open. Hey, man, but I tell you what, next week, if you ain't doing nothing, you can bring the wife and kids out to my house. We can watch the game over there. Now they sitting inside the car, but they still got one leg hanging out, door still open. Hey, man, but it was good seeing you, man. Tell everybody I said, hey, the one here, I'm going to catch you next time. Now they close the door, but they roll the window down and stick their head out. Hey, man, your team trash now, but I'm going to catch you next week. Now they done driven to the end of the driveway. All right, y'all take care now, man. I'm going to catch you next week. Now they done finally left your driveway, but before they leave, they throw their hand out the window, wave, and honk the horn three times. All right, that's all I got for y'all today, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the second lesson. Um, if there's anything else you want me to go in detail about, Leave it in the comment section and I got y'all. I'm going to leave y'all with one of the best things about the South, okay? Whenever somebody drives past you or somebody sees you out in public and y'all are too far to actually speak to each other, there is one thing that you need to do to let them know that you've seen them, okay? Now, usually if they're in the car, they're going to honk to you. When they honk, you turn and you hit them with one of these right here. Mm. If you don't do that, you're being disrespectful, man. Y'all be easy. Take care of yourselves. Don't talk like one of them. You're not. Even if you'd like to be. To them, you're just a freak. Like me. <laughs>